Okay, hello and welcome to this Garrettcom training presentation on setting the IP address uh, information on your switch. Uh, just so that you know um, physically where we are, uh, if I open up the IP camera, we can see that we have a, a console connection to the front of the switch, uh, and that's linked back to the USB serial converter, and again back to the USB port on the side of my laptop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up PuTTY, double click, and in a previous video we did a, um, a brief video on terminal emulators, and uh, we set up a Garrettcom connection, so if I double click here, it will automatically bring it up, but for the benefit of those who didn't see that video, I'll just run through the steps briefly again, so if we click on Garrettcom and we load that, we can see that we're using a particular COM port, and the speed to note is 38400, 38400 in order to connect to the serial port, the console port on a Garrettcom switch. If we open that connection, we get to the command prompt. So let me just adjust the window size. Um, and just again. Okay, so first we can see is we've got these messages come up here. So boot P failed to obtain an IP address and some other messages. We get the login prompt, manager, and manager, the default usernames and passwords, and these will give you read-write access to the switch. You can make any changes you want to the switch using this account. And it's the default account, so manager and manager are the default usernames and passwords. Okay, so if I uh, reboot the switch, if you want to restart it to power cycle it, you just type in reboot, and click yes and then no to that. It says it's rebooting now. And it, the reason I want to show you the reboot is that when it reboots, it will start to go through the process of looking for an IP address. And you'll get certain error messages come up on screen. Um, so here, for example, we've, we've gone to the hard drive, if you like, the flash memory. There's no actually hard drives on these switches. They always use flash. Um, OK. So we'll click return to enter, log in, and we get these uh, error messages come up. The first one is DHCP failed to find an IP address. The second is boot P failed to find an IP address. And the third is setting the default IP to 192.168.1.2. Now, every switch which comes out of the box goes through this whole process when it's powered on. It will look to see if there's any DHCP servers on the network. If that doesn't find an IP address via DHCP, and we won't discuss what that is, it's just a protocol which allows a switch to automatically receive an IP address. It will then look for a boot P server, which is an older version of DHCP, and finally if it can't find an IP address via one of those two methods, it will check to see if this IP address is available, 192.168.1.2. If that IP address is available, it will assign itself that IP address. And what that means is that uh, if you know it's got that IP address, uh, you can actually set your computer to be on the same subnet and you'll be able to connect to the switch automatically via the default IP address without actually having to use the console port. You could also use the web browser to connect to that IP address and we'll run through that shortly. So I just wanted to give you the rundown on this, these messages here. They're not anything to worry about. They're simply a helpful tool to try to automatically configure the switch for you. So that uh, switch powers on, it, it kind of like automatically configures, auto sets itself up, uh, ready to work. So we want to log in. So it's manager and manager. Uh, I mistyped due to those messages. And now what we need to do is we need to enter the IP address that we want to use on the switch because uh, we can't just simply rely on the defaults. So here we're going to type in IP config, IP config, and if we press question mark, all of the commands at the command line, uh, if you follow them with a question mark, it gives you a rundown on what the command is and what it does. This one, for example, is used to configure an IP address a subnet mask and a gateway, a default gateway. And it also below that it gives you a rundown on the structure of that command and how to use it. So let's let's go through this here. Uh, IP config IP 
equals 192.168. Dot, let's put it on the 40 subnet. Dot, let's call this one number two. Uh, if you want, you can press return, and that will automatically uh, set the default mask for that network. Uh, I don't want to get involved in too much of IP addressing theory, uh, just the mechanics of how you set the IP address on the switch. If you want to see what setup you have, what IP address information you have on a switch, just type in show IP config. An IP config similar to the command you would type on your uh, computer to see the IP address on your computer. And here we have, we can see, we've got the IP address we assigned, we've got the default mask, and we haven't got any default gateway. So let's go ahead and change those. Now, uh, one of the problems with the command line is you can end up typing uh, quite a few commands, some of which are quite complicated. So there's a whole bunch of useful features uh, which you can use. For example, if you enter a command and then press return, if you then need to re-enter that command or one of the commands you entered previously, if you click on the up arrow, you, it, it basically toggles through the previously entered commands. Up goes up and then down goes down the list of those commands. So here we want to enter a new command, ipconfig, but this time we want to follow it up with the mask. Again, what mask equals a mask equals 255.255.255.0 and then we want to put in the default gateway or a DGW equals 192.168.40 and we're going to put this on as 254. Now if we go up again we get a previous command and up again we get the show IP config and now we can see again the default um, the IP address here is set the default mask is still used and the default gateway or the gateway address here has been set as well. We also have an IP version 6 address, but we won't talk about IP version 6 here. Okay, so that's how to set the IP address and how to view the IP address details on the switch and how to set the IP uh, default gateway, which is basically the IP address of your router on your network. Once you make any changes, always remember to save those changes. Click save and return. Touch it saving. And that's it, that's how to set the IP address details on the switch. So let's go ahead and make use of those. If we actually log out of the uh, um, console port, uh, just to bear in mind, if you are using the console port with PuTTY, the backspace key doesn't work because PuTTY doesn't recognize that command. If you want to use the backspace, it's Control and then H. And uh, Hyperterm, incidentally, doesn't have that feature. Um, Again, hyperterm probably for newer users uh, to networking, people who are newer to networking probably would prefer hyperterm to putty, but uh, putty's got some great features as well. So let's log out. Uh, log out from current session. And we can just close it down. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I'm actually going to use Hyperterm this time. Uh, I'll show you Putty, and I want to use a Telnet connection uh, to Hyperterm. So uh, okay, let's get let's let's get on and do that. Okay, so let's fire up Hyperterm, and um, what we need to do is we need to create a new connection again. Just press the, the full stop in there. And this time, instead of selecting COM ports, we're going to select TCP IP because we're going to be using an IP connection rather than a serial connection to get to the uh, switch via the Telnet. Okay, so we need to enter the IP address of the switch, which is the one we just entered, 192.168.40.2. And Telnet always uses 23, but leave that at the default and then click OK. Now, um, what I need to do is I need to uh, connect a console cable. Um, forgive me, a um, a um, a LAN cable, a, um, a a network cable, an Ethernet cable. Sorry, half asleep. I don't know what's going wrong with me. Um, I was just, in actual fact, thinking about a cable which is long enough to reach that switch, and I don't have one to hand. So bear with me one second. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. Um, what I had to do then is I actually already using my uh, LAN port on my PC con to connect to the IP camera and I actually wanted to show you how I was going to connect to it so um, 
I've actually connected to another switch and then to the the 6K switch. So uh, if I just fire that up for you, so you can have a look. Okay, so this is the IP camera uh, in front of the switch. We're going to take the uh, uh, LAN connection, the uh, Cat5 cable, the Ethernet cable, and plug that into the front of the switch. Like that you can see the green LEDs come up, so we know we've got a good connection, and we have the other end of the connection. Uh, go into a switch and then back to my computer here. So we've got a, an IP connection, an Ethernet connection between the two. So PC to switch and now they can talk to each other. Okay so we have the uh, LAN cables installed so we have uh, an Ethernet connection. The next thing to know is that we need to have an IP address on our computer set to somewhere on the same network and I'll show you how to do that briefly but if I just click OK we will be able to get to here we are, the console manager and main manager again. So now we've made a, a telnet connection into the switch. And uh, log out here. Yes, we want to leave. And just close that down. Move that across so you can see me close it. Okay, so you want to see what IP address you have on your switch, uh, on your PC. If you go to the start menu, and if I just bring this across, um, you can go to the command prompt via your Windows machine and if you double click here it brings up the command prompt um, and you can type in IP config just like we did on the switch forward slash all and what it will do is this particular uh, PC has got loads of uh, network cards and what have you on there but what we're looking for is the IP address of the Ethernet interface Ethernet adapter local area connection and here we can see that this one's got a 192.168.40.100 address. So it's on the same network. It's on the same uh, 192.168.40 network. And if we want to change the IP address, what we need to do is uh, we need to, if I just, um, if just bear with me one moment, if you go to the uh, network uh, section in your Windows machine, uh, again, if you're using Linux or some other operating system, it'll be different. And uh, different versions of Windows work differently, so how to get it will be different. Again, pop online, have a look around, see. Uh, this should, there's plenty of tutorials to show you how to do this. But on this one here, I've dragged the shortcut to the Networking Sharing Center. So if I double click on here and minimize that down. So we have here Change Adapter Settings. And here we have a list of all of the uh, uh, connections we have. We have the wireless connection disabled and we have the LAN connection here. If we select it and right click and go down to properties we'll let it come up, we get the uh, local area connection properties here. In this list we need to select Internet Protocol version 4 and let's go properties here. And here we can see the IP address and we need to make sure that these uh, whatever's got 255 in is the uh, indicates the network portion and we need to make sure that we have the same address uh, the first three uh, octets are the same 192.168.40 in this case and something between 1 and 2.254 which isn't being used, a unique address again I don't want to go in too much into the theory of IP addressing but you need to be on the same network as your switch or you need to have a router to move you from one network to the other OK, so in this case we are, click OK, and that's how you would set the IP address and uh, view the IP address on your PC. OK, uh, and that's how we make an IP connection as well. So in this video we covered how to set the IP uh, details of your switch and how to view those, so the configuration and the verification. And we also briefly covered uh, making a Telnet connection using that IP address and also how to uh, check the IP address details on your PC and how to change those. Uh, but those two features were slightly outside the scope of this course. So um, again, if in doubt, we do a, a, a training course here at Garrett.com. There are also lots of information online available and of course a lot of you will already know this information anyway. Uh, so that completes this training presentation. So on behalf of Garrett.com I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope it's been helpful and I hope it's been interesting. So goodbye.